Hey y'all, I'm back. Um, for those who are just tuning in for the first time, we had a time, about an hour of a time, um, just a few minutes ago, and then I came in here and changed into my little Henrietta outfit, and I'm waiting to go to set now, um, so I wanted to come back on <coughs> and kind of give you guys um, a fly on the wall view of this process, this part of the process, I should say, um, where we're waiting because this job is a lot of hurry up and wait. <laughs> so, um, because I was early, I think we talked about that already. <laughs> I was early. Um, then I have a little time and generally what I like to do in my time is have some breakfast this morning. I'm having a little oatmeal and raisins, a little fruit. Um, and then I like to learn my lines. Um, and that's not to say I wait for the last minute to learn my lines. But um, what I do is I read the script so that I know the story. And then, um, and then I learn my lines. Because for me, I think it's more important. My approach is more so it's more important to know the story because the lines are just words used to tell the story, right? And um, if I know the story, it makes the process easier for me to learn the lines because I already know what it is that we're trying to say, you know? And so the lines are just like the words used to tell the story that we're trying to tell. So today I have a few scenes. I'll be here um, most of the day. Let's just say all the day. Um, <laughs> And I was mistaken, Kenny is not just floating in, he was here before me. He had a small scene, or has a small scene before the rest of us come in, so he's already up at set. Um, so once I get to set, I will definitely bring him in and you know have him say good morning to you guys and you guys say good morning to him. So Kenny's already here, he's at set. So we're waiting for him to finish his <laughs> meanwhile Oliver's still get, getting his tattoos covered you understand <laughs> you get it now so we're all just waiting for Oliver's tattoos to be covered and then we can start but um so yeah so my first scene of the day um is about two and four eighths of a page um that may be gibberish for some of you um that's you know about a two and a half page scene um which a two and a half page scene could take anywhere from three to four hours to shoot. Um, two and a half pages. Because there's a lot of components. There's a lot of people in the scene. There's a lot of coverage to get. There's a lot of angles to hit, you know. Um, so we'll be going in to do that. And so here we are. I'll have you learn my lines with me in this two and a half page scene. I, you know, I already know what's going on in the scene. Um, so now I'm just gonna go through, flip through and look for Hen and see what words Hen has to say in order to tell the story of this particular moment. And in this particular moment, here we are. Um, on what looks like the last page of a almost three page scene. Ah, oh, there we are. And Hen comes rushing in. And my line is, sorry, I'm late, Cap. So I learned my line for the first scene. Moving right along. <laughs> um, you know, there's some, some other scenes. Um, and I have, you know, a bit more to say. I won't say it out loud because I don't want to give away any spoilers and stuff. But that's just to let you know um, what I do in this waiting time. I also, sometimes when I have early calls, um, I have a devotion here at the job that mirrors one of my devotions at home. So I'll read the devotion at home. But then I always know that, you know, it's here if I want to just sit with it for a little bit, a little while longer. So I will read um, a page from one of my devotions that I'll use at home. It's the Jesus Calling one um, with you guys. Again, it's just kind of like a mirror into 
what I do when I'm here. Um, so today is March 1st, and today's devotion read, When something in your life or thoughts makes you anxious, come to me. Talk about it. Simple enough, right? Bring me your prayer. Bring me your petition. Oh, and with that, bring thanksgiving. Saying, thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to trust you more. Right? So whatever it is that is invoking anxiety um, or any, you know, challenging, tough feelings, talk about it and also be mindful to hold a perspective around grace that there is an experience that's unfolding, right? Um, and that experience can be used and leveraged as an opportunity to widen, broaden, and enlarge um, your trust muscle, right? So thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to trust you more. Though the lessons of trust that I send to you come wrapped in difficulties, the benefit far outweighs the cost. Well-developed trust will bring you many blessings, um, not the least of which is my peace. I have promised to keep you in perfect peace to the extent that you trust in me. The world has it backwards, teaching that peace is the result of having enough money, enough possessions, enough insurance, and security systems. My peace, however, is such an all-encompassing gift that it is independent of all circumstances. That's a pretty powerful piece. That is a piece that I am ever in pursuit of because circumstances are so ever-changing and I don't want circumstances to ever govern the core of my being or to disrupt um, the peace within. You know, if I have peace that usually helps me to push through most circumstances in life. Um, I try to employ what I call fast forwarding the tape, which means that when I'm in the middle of some circumstance or I'm in sort of the center of a situation, what, you know, I try to be still with myself and look at what it looks like on the other side, because I think sometimes anxiety can rise up when we are thinking about the overwhelming nature of said situation or said circumstance. But m most circumstances um, afford us an opportunity to look back at it retrospectively. And the retrospective look is always uh, more enlightening and more rewarding than the perspective that we see um, when we only look at it through the limited lens of like being right there in the, in the, in the midst of it. So I try to like, you know, tell myself fast forward the tape. What does this look like, you know, on the other side? What is the best case scenario on the other side? Um, and I also tell myself that, um, whatever is happening to me, through me, around me, you know, um, in, in most circumstances, obviously, there's a more nuanced conversation around a lot of this, but um, that it is the best, <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's sort of a mentality that I adopted maybe, you know, around during the pandemic, like, it's going to be great. This is God's best, you know, this is God's best. Um, because a lot of times the vision that I have is a little bit more limited than the than the vision that God has for my life, you know. And so allowing things um, to happen and for courses to be corrected and for detours to be taken um, is a part of allowing the best to enter into my life um, as opposed to what I may think is the best. But anyway, we're off course. Well-developed trust will bring you many blessings, not the least of which is my peace. I have promised to keep you in perfect peace to the extent that you trust in me. The world has it backwards, teaching that peace is the result of having enough money, possessions, insurance, and security systems. 
My peace, however, is such an all-encompassing gift that it is independent of all circumstances. Though you lose everything else, if you gain my peace, you are rich indeed. Um, and I tend to write little notes um, in the margins sometimes. And one of the notes that I wrote was that just, you know, just to allow the lessons and the difficult experiences to develop well-developed trust. I mean, give me well-developed trust. Um, trust is one of those precarious things sometimes, you know, that we think we're trusting, um, but when triggered, it, it, it's almost like trust shrivels, <laughs> you know, but trust, well-developed trust operates even when we're triggered, um, I think. So if you... want to dig deep further into the scriptures that you know are kind of supporting this reading you can do so by reading Philippians 4 6 Isaiah 26 and 3 and 2nd Thessalonians 3 16 again Philippians 4 6 Isaiah 26 3 and 2nd Thessalonians 3 16 um, so that is something, um, that I also just do, you know, when I have time again to come here, when I have early mornings, you know, when I have super early mornings where I don't get the time to be at home, you know, in those early morning hours and really sit with it, sit with my devotion, um, journal, pray, and just, you know, have that moment when I'm just like up and, and you just have enough time to absorb a little reading, say a little prayer and keep it pushing. You know, I like to seize a moment in the day and generally it's right in these in this beginning time where I'm waiting to go to set because Oliver's getting his tattoos coming up. <laughs> no, but when I'm waiting to go to set, you know, I try to keep keep my stuff wherever I can so that I have it available, you know, so there are things in my car, there are things on the job, you know, so that um I know that I have the tools that I need for filling myself up and taking a sip um, whenever I need it so that I'm, you know, avoiding being parched or thirsting. So there's that. Um, hopefully, I will be calling me this that soon so that I can get into this first scene and deliver my line of sorry I'm late cap. <laughs> um, yes, I'm reading some of your comments here. Yeah, the trust is difficult when you have an unexpected loss, but I'm working on it. Thanks for sharing. Um, thank you for sharing that and thank you um, for sharing even a piece of your strength with this space in talking about that unexpected loss. Um, I can certainly relate in the area of having an unexpected loss and having my own trust muscle <laughs> um, compromised in, in that moment. Certainly I lost my dad in 2013 and it was very unexpected and my trust muscle was certainly compromised. And I think I look at that time in my life, honestly, it's like um, one of the times where I look back retrospectively and I say, I look at it as kind of the measure for wanting to make sure that I am increasing the strength of my trust muscle in these days so that I don't feel um, the level of like, emptiness and void that I felt at that time, <clears throat> which was scary for me because I had never felt it at that depth and that level. Um, I certainly, you know, still experience and, and hold space for feeling honest feelings um, surrounding grief, grief and being kind and being gracious to yourself and allowing yourself to feel all the feelings that you need surrounding grief. Um, but being able to make sure also that uh, 
your trust muscle is strong enough to carry you through those feelings. And so those feelings don't become so overwhelming that it moves you into a dark space um, that you feel like you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, which, you know, is a little bit of how I felt at that time. So thankfully, I'm on the other side. Um, and I still move through, you know, very um, genuine moments and feelings of grief surrounding my dad and the loss of my dad um, unexpectedly, but in a way that is, I think, more fruitful and there's more peace. There's more peace. Um... I see you, T-I-C-C-I-I. -I. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Stacy, for sharing that. Yeah. I remember when it happened, um, probably a year after, you know, well, actually immediately after, a lot of friends, you know, were sharing their experiences too. And I was like, man, this is the sorority that I never wanted to enter. You know, this is... Oh, there's a knock on the door. This, come in. Hey, Aisha, five minute warning. Love it for us. We've got a five minute warning. Thank you. Um, To travel up to set. Um, yeah, you know, you don't know what it feels like until you know what it feels like. And once you've entered and people start to share, it's like there's a, a connective thing that happens. It's unspoken and it's just, it's a knowing like, whew. Whew. Yes, that's true, Angie. Loss comes in so many packages. Um, divorce is another form of loss and uh, that requires, you know, or can come with grief. I am praying for your grandmother, um, Joria. Joria Jill H6. Losing my grandmother was another kind of like bottom from underneath me taken out. Um, but I can say that she lived 93 glorious years. Um, but when you grow up with a grandmother and that's all you've ever known, it's like, what? Where are you going? <laughs> so um, that was a loss that I had to reconcile and reorient myself in the world, you know, because I really only knew how to live in the world with my granny alive. And those are two people who really um, shape the fabric of who I am. So many days I'm kind of still trying to set my feet on firm foundation without their physical presence. That's true, Danny. Grief is not linear not linear yes Brianna Marie I'm sorry yeah thank you thank you all for you know sharing your encouragement and your inspiration but also thank you all for sharing your own or opening your heart to you know kind of grieve out loud in this space and share your own um fears and feelings surrounding your loved ones and your experiences i appreciate that and i value that and i honor that so thank you for that um go to school girl ariana go to school we don't want you sitting on this live not going to school go to school <laughs> <clears throat> oh Danny I'm so sorry to hear that sis you know I love you and I am sending the warmest tightest hug of support and peace to you and to the family Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you for 
joining me um, in creating these daily gratitude lists. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, a way of just trying to be intentional about just acknowledging the things that are happening, the, the little mini miracles that sit right underneath, you know, our nose that, you know, sometimes we might take for granted if we don't acknowledge it and acknowledge it out loud. Um, and then just, you know, infecting the space with an energy that is grateful because there's so much, en so much energy that floats around this space. So if we can be intentional about adding to the energy in a way that is um, nourishing, that is, you know, just a small part of uh, my intention surrounding that. Um, and, you know, sometimes I just sit down and, and like right now I just hear a plane flying above and, you know, it's just, it reminds me, you know, it's just like, oh, signs of life, signs of movement, you know, are right within my earshot. And I want to just take a moment to acknowledge that, you know, it's not just a plane moving, but lives on the plane, you know, which means that someone on some side is either hoping to see somebody on that plane or someone on this side may have just been so fulfilled from seeing someone on that plane. They're ready, so let's get on this um, van and go to the and say these lines. What's my line, y'all? Anybody remember my, my, my line? We, we learn these lines together. water. There you go, Delaney Lop. <laughs> Delaney Lop about to take over my... There you go. Hardy Inez. There you go, Sophia. <laughs> there you go. Sorry I'm late, Cap. <laughs> Sorry, you mom. Life is so hard. Life is so hard. Let's see who's going to be first on this transpo van and who's going to be last getting on. No, the gag is I'll probably be the last one on. They probably called me last. Who knows? We'll see. I'm in pursuit of gold stars all day. Oh, I'm not the first one on, that's for sure. You know why? Because you know who the first one on is? This guy. My penis. What is going on? I'm doing an IG Live. Oh, you are. Right. I don't know if Peter knows what IG Live is, but we're just going to assume that he does. IG must be stands for Instagram. Oh. The age of social media. Peter, they're all screaming your name. Peter, Peter, <laughs> with lots of R's, lots of stars, lots of hearts. Well, yes. you know. Peter's a consummate I'm professional. A, I'm not a social media person, so. He's not a social media person, but I gave you a little peek. <laughs> I entered into his space with my social media. Yes, you did. And he gave y'all a little grin and a little eye through paper. So take that and let that be enough, okay? Okay. <laughs> But you know who is a social media person? <laughs> Oliver. Before your life took on a very serious tone. What are you drinking to it? Strange. Did it make what you uncomfortable? It? it didn't. I just didn't think I should intervene. What are you putting in your body? Let me see that. It's just an energy drink. It's supposed to be. No, let's see. Do you not know how to be serious? I do, but. He does. I try and stay away from it. He doesn't right like for me to be serious. I love you. I love everything. He loves everything I do. That's why I love him so. Huh? That's why I love you so. You love me? This, love me. this was almost gonna last a full five minutes of kindness to one another. I know that I did. I certainly made a valiant effort. You, however, questioned my love for you, which I, then I turned this dark. About this packaging. 
It, well, it's Sour Patch Kids. They're marketing this to children. No, it's Shot. not for children. It's just What's so that? It's, it's marketing drink. it to children. It's got a little Sour Patch What's blue that? raspberry. Oh, no, it's not for children. It's an energy it's it's, a, Yeah, it's, it's an energy it's drink, but they're marketing it to children. Right There's concern about an energy drink that's being drank right now. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Full of caffeine. It's got gummies on it. Slow and sugar. You know what's funny? Oliver, you don't need an energy drink. No. You of all people don't need an energy drink. I've never seen you low on energy. Yeah, because you're my energy. You boost me. You are my weather. I'm around you. I just feel bored. This is why I wanted to make sure you guys were on this van with us because the drama on the van far exceeds that which lands on Fox. <laughs> Someone said, let the kids have the caffeine. They have enough to worry about. <laughs> no. <laughs> Where's um Ani room? They're ready up. Oh, so the last on the van was Ryan. Not me. <laughs> he absolutely was ready. He just wanted to make sure that Oliver was on the van already. No, Oliver absolutely doesn't need energy drinks. He works out at 2.30 in the morning. His endorphins get going at 4 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. I'm having steel cut oatmeal with some um, oranges. I mean, not oranges, with what is this? Raisins. It's giving me some good pumpkins. Yes, we're definitely excited to release 6B. So We've been working hard on it. Declan, Declan, who plays our son, Tracy and I's son. Um, Denny is doing an extraordinary job in 6B and um, I can't wait for you to see him. He has grown so much from the first season. Um, physically and, and more. And it's just been great to watch him grow and evolve on this show and, and this season. He really takes us on a ride. We should have water. 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 Yeah, yeah. He's also done the two We're shooting both. Which I, yeah, you know, that's the thing about Peter is fascinated by the fact that I'm sitting here. Every day, every day, <laughs> in the van, I have to feed Aisha her oatmeal. Come on, now. Come on. Come on, you got a big day of work ahead. There you go. <laughs> you guys, you're getting prime Peter here. <laughs> there you go. These really are my guys. I don't have to lift a finger of it. <laughs> 
really been a cushy job. You <sighs> realize that for five, no, six seasons six now, seasons. it's been you and the boys. It's been me and my guys. <laughs> Love every second of it. <laughs> 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 I love him too. No, I really do. I really do get spoiled by these guys. I work with some of the warmest, wonderful people. People always talk about them. Mm. My cast, my crew, but for real, my cast, my crew. Hi, Greg. Yeah, yeah, fuck it. Gives you a thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> Driving to set. Then I kind of like when I felt the most like cheap, but I just want to. So our base camp is different from where our set is. We don't park right where we shoot. We park usually in a central space, wide open central space, um, that is separate from where the action takes place and where we're shooting so that we don't have a lot of cars and trailers in the backgrounds of shots in the event that we're shooting outdoors. Um, so we are driving over to our set today. Our set is the 118 Fire Station. I'll walk you in. Standard distance from base camp to set. Generally, it's about 5, 10, 15 minutes at any point. Are you still on this? Erica, she wants to be on this. She had the nerve to be like, are you still on this? But she really We've all been here working so hard. You have been, huh? This is Erica. She's our key PA, and she's also... Yes. Um, the first oh, team guys, PA. Guys, we gotta go this This is way. her working while I interrupt her work. Oh, <laughs> this is her trying to wrangle them. Yeah. Wrangling. Like Wrangling. Children. Children. <laughs> because they were they were about to walk into the set, but they're still shooting. Let's go. Oh Can't God, do that. Almost ran into that. Almost impaled you. So, um, she's also the first team PA, which means that she has to make sure that we're where we need to be when we need to be there. Peter, don't go in there. That's her. <laughs> That's her trying to make sure Pete doesn't go into the, into the, uh, what is this called? Into the set because they're still shooting. So one of the things they do, they call us to set before they actually need us. It's fine. Um, just so we're in the waiting position. No, she's not hurting cats. <laughs> just, ch just children. <laughs> Who's in there shooting? Um, that's Kenny. Kenny's in there shooting. Who's he in there with Aniru? Yeah. Kenny and Aniru are shooting a scene. <laughs> Erica's over. Oh, my God. Yes, sir, I had them outside. Taking us to rehearsal where I'm going to say... Sorry, I'm Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, can you turn this around so press that little button? I do everything for you. <laughs> 
So this is the uh, costume rack fire engine set, but that's a costume rack and a fire engine set. That's our producer, director, writer, Juan Carlos Cotto. He's also a University of Miami hurricane. Go Canes. If you know, you know. This is Brad Beaker, the director of our next episode. So we're shooting two episodes today at the same time. So we have two directors in the house at the same time. I think they're probably working on the last shot. That's our AD. He is directing background talent. I know we love Joaquin. We're gonna find Joaquin. All right, let's try that. All right, let's roll, please. Rolling. Rolling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're rolling, so I'm gonna disappear. <laughs> Here comes Ryan with something That's deep to lines. say. <laughs> no, I don't get that. <laughs> Ryan, wants, Ryan wants to see his lines. Ryan's learning his lines <laughs> three minutes before we go into <laughs> rehearsal. <laughs> Consummate professional. I'm sure they could tell. <laughs> As you can see, I took a long time learning my lines in the trailer before we got here. Hey, Cap. Sorry, Cap. Sorry, I'm late, Cap. <laughs> see? Damn, I took all that time learning it, I and I <laughs> had the nerve to forget it. <laughs> I literally had the same mind. <laughs> yeah, I can. Curry's <laughs> asking, does he want uh, camera oh, right to left or left to right? <laughs> 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 this, this is important story, <laughs> important storytelling. <laughs> Can you give us, can you give the people a read on Yeah Cap? Can you just, can you give us a couple reads of Yeah Cap? Yeah Cap. Can you, can you do it as if um, you went to Trader Joe's before? Went to Trader Joe's before, all right. Yeah Cap. Can you do it as if you went to Whole Foods, but it was closed? Yeah Cap. This is great. Can you do it as if you were wearing yellow socks? Socks. Yeah. And yeah. camera. See, this is why he is Action the camera. only one that can play Eddie Diaz. <laughs> he understands him on levels that Learned no that other I actor really Thank you. Yeah. would. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Eddie in yellow socks, Eddie at Whole Foods closed. These are two different Eddies. This is what we have to understand. <laughs> Yeah, Cap. Yeah, Cap. Oof. Ooh. Your job is in jeopardy, right? You know what? You can have my badge. <laughs> <laughs> Take it off. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Somebody about to lose their job. <laughs> Oliver's back here being our set photographer. He's got his camera ready to go and his camera bag. No, I can't tell you his first line because he doesn't have any lines. He's just here to be our set photographer. <laughs> but he still puts on the uniform because... Elena's on here. Elena? Say hi. What's up, Elena? We miss you. Say hi to Elena, Oliver. Elena, we miss you. I gotta text you back. Sorry, I didn't text you back, Elena. <laughs> 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 
just on a roll this morning. Man, I'm striking out. They want they want a version of Yak Hat. They want a version of Yak Hat if you were given the wrong order. Yak Hat, wrong order. If you were given Yak Hat, as if you were given the wrong order. Yeah, Cap. Oof. Jeez. <laughs> the Critics' Choice got it all wrong. All wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is Erica being a police officer dressed as a PA. <laughs> we don't know why they bring us up here so early to tell us. <laughs> but I like being here early because. No, you don't, you liar. <laughs> Go Roy. Go rolling. They're still rolling. work out this morning? <gasps> An IG exclusive. A morning has come that Oliver did not work out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Alert. I'll find Thank out what's tonight. wrong. I'll let you know later. TMZ. Peter ran away from me. I wonder why. Checking the gate. That means we're moving inside. I'm going to take you to the one we've been waiting for. Look who I've got. Hello, America. <laughs> it's not just America. We have people in here. Hello, world. <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that for? Instagram. Is it the... Hello, Instagram world. I'm sorry, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I gotta go again. <coughs> and here is our DP. Here's our DP, Wacky. Hello. They asked for you, Wacky. They did? Yeah. <laughs> Kenny, look. They just want you. They want you. Kenny, 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 Jim, Jim. Oh, is this one of those live things? Yeah. <laughs> this is us. Hold this for me. Oh. <laughs> Can't get you. Brad Beaker, our director. We love Brad. It's been us in the beginning. He goes and then he comes back. And we love that. I'm happy to be back. <laughs> Breaks the fast. You know what I'm saying? Brad comes in and directs our hardest episodes because no one else has the guts to. <laughs> <laughs> So this is us standing in a circle. <laughs> this is where we're gonna now read it through. But guess what? I can't let you hear the read through because then you'll hear spoilers. So bye. <laughs>